in the back of the front end with missile head for prayer for our pastors. Father of the Holy we pray. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, for you have blessed our parish community and your present thanks to our church and your house of prayer. You never refuse us welcome when we come before you as your children people. In our parish, you realize the mystery of the dwelling of us. For in shaping us as your holy temple, you are in your own church, which is the very body of Christ. We pray that you continue to bless our parish community. May all, all who gather in faith listen to your word and celebrate your sacraments, experience the presence of Christ in our parish community, joyfully afford to love and to serve you and proclaim Christ's name to all those we encounter, for it is a reign with you in the Holy Spirit, one God and forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebrant for this Mass is our Pastor Mark. We're beginning in the back of the church. Please remain in your pew and stand up and turn to the back. Just to let you give you some context of what I've been doing for the last 10 years, now I'll be doing this for year 11, is blessing the palm in the back, reading the gospel, the deacon will be doing that, giving a short homily, and then we're going to go to the front as normal. And then we have the three-part gospel, but at the end of that, we're just going to sit in silence and contemplate what we just heard and also think about how we're going to participate in Holy Week, in particular the Triduum, which is Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, the Easter Sunday. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered in his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let's commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey to Jerusalem as he drew near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples. He said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent up went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road and now, as he was approaching the slopes of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said to them, I tell you, if they kept silent, the stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. 
so we're reminded that Jesus enters Jerusalem knowing he's approaching his crucifixion, including the suffering beforehand, the scourging and the mock mockery, etc., the crowning of thorns. And so he's not going into Jerusalem in surprise. He's knowingly going there and it builds up throughout the Lent season, whenever they were going towards Jerusalem, this is on his mind. <coughs> he knows it's coming, it's going to be a difficult road to travel. Remember, he says in the Garden of Gethsemane, let this cup of suffering pass me by, but not my will, but your will be done. And so when he enters, he's greeted as a king, and everyone's very happy and very excited. They're singing Hosanna. But what's interesting is that those same people that yelled Hosanna later in the week are going to yell, crucify him. And we could possibly identify with these people because we have that struggle within ourselves. St. Paul says we do the things we don't want to do and we don't do the things we want to do. And so we sin when we don't want to and we want to do good. And so uh, we have that dichotomy in us, this, uh, yelling Hosanna one day and crucify him another day through following Christ and choosing sin. And so, with that dichotomy in mind, the remedy, the only remedy, is grace. And so we need God's grace to overcome this uh, dichotomy that St. Paul uh, mentioned. So I just want to share some words in particular about uh, Palm Sunday, also known as Passion Sunday. Passion means suffering. This is a uh, meditation called On the Palm Branches. This is um, by St. Andrew of Crete. That's in our uh, office of readings for tomorrow. Let us go together to meet Christ on the Mount of Olives. Today he returns from Bethany and proceeds of his own free will towards his holy and blessed passion to consummate the mystery of our salvation. He who came down from heaven to raise us from the depths of sin, to raise us with himself, we are told of scriptures above every sovereignty, authority, and power, and every other name that can be named, now comes with his own free will to make his journey to Jerusalem. He comes without pomp or ostentation. As the psalmist says, he will, will not dispute or raise his voice to make it heard in the streets. Let us run to accompany him as he hastens towards his passion and imitate those who met him then, not by covering his pack with garments, olive branches, or palms, but by doing all we can to prostrate ourselves before him, but being humble, and by trying to live as he would wish us to live. And we shall be able to receive the word at his coming, and God, who no limits can contain, will be within us. So let us spread before his feet in garments, not poor soulless, not garments, poor soulless olive branches, which delight the eye for a few hours and then wither, but ourselves, clothed in his grace, or rather, clothed completely in him. Let us go forth in peace. <laughs>
example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, righteously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you to the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my ear. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Him. 
all you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. St. Peter to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me 
is with me at table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The king of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, the greatest among you will be the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. But once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times at, that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No. <laughs> they replied, He said to them, but now one of you has a money bag, should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, that he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. Then, going out, he went as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them, and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Still, and to strengthen him, my will with I'm yours sorry. be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven prepared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve. A man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then, he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out against the robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the night, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, you too are a But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. Assuredly, it was the man who was with him, 
for you also But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing him and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, when they revolved him in, in saying many other things against him, when they came, the council of elders out of people, out of the people, met both chief priests and scribes, and they brought before him, before the Sanhedrin, they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But this, from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked. Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them. You say that I am. Then they said. What authority have we for testimony? We have heard from the Son of God. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying. We have this man to speak our people. He opposes the name of the Jesus, and maintains that he is the Christ of the Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is the right people who is teaching throughout all Judea, who now be and On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been waiting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him, and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him consciously and mocked him. And after closing him in resplendent guard, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that every day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him deciding the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But they all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Against Pilate addressed him, saying, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flagged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be greeted and granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, to the cold of a certain sign, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they carried him behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who had mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. 
Weep instead for yourselves and your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now, two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, and on his right, and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others, let him save himself. He is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourselves and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. They replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. Then all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened. They returned home beating their breast, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now, there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph. Though he was a member of the council, had not considered to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was a day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfume oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the command. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We will be seated in silence, contemplating what we just heard, and thinking about how we are participating in Holy Week, in particular the Trinity.
Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made, must stand to the Father, to him all things made, for us the name of our salvation, in the young heaven, by the Holy Spirit, of our courage and Mary, and Amen. For our sake, for the sweat of the pilot, we suffer death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From the beginning, glory to judge between the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will the Father and the Son, and the Lord, the Lord of life, the voice of God, the prophets. I believe in my holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Christ was obedient to his Father, even to death on a cross. With confidence in Father's, the Father's great love, let us offer our prayers this day. For the church on earth, may Jesus our Savior keep us faithful and lead us in the way of the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, may God's love soften the hearts and minds of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all preparing to enter the church, may the Holy Spirit fill them with the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family of faith, may God use our fasting, alms, and prayers for his glory and draw us closer to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, may Jesus, the suffering servant, be their strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died in faith, especially Jack Schrems, during this Lenten season, may they rejoice with the angels and the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray in particular for the happy repose of the soul of Priscilla Poprosky when this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father, your infinite majesty, please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. In the name of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 150, O Sacred Head Surround 150.
best friend for this your dying sorrow. Your mercy without end. Lord, make me yours forever. A loyal servant true. And let me never, never outlive my love for you. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours to be accepted with God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere, give you thanks, your Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Very deeply, O oh Lord, all your creator rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power and work of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and give you thanks, and said the blessing, so he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and give you thanks, and said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, we celebrate the world of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as before to his second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. We hope we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We make us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance of your life, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Blessed Joseph, her spouse, who blessed the apostles, the glorious martyrs, the St. Isaac Jokes, and all the saints, who is constant intercession in your presence and rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in our days and by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of your Lord Amen. Lord Jesus Christ and your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please join us singing hymn number 336, Behold the Lamb. 336.
There will be a collection on Good Friday for the Holy Land's pilgrim sites and churches. Please refer to the bulletin for the Holy Week schedule and more announcements. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us the hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of snare and the devil. May God rebuke we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, for the power of God, cast in hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, who crown up the world, and seek your glory of souls. Amen. For our closing hymn, please join in singing hymn number 416, Jesus Remember Me, 416.